In any given era in history, there have been men and women who have gone against the status quo and leave a mark in history. On today's African History 101, we look into a woman whose action saved her country from an Italian invasion and helped her country to become one of the two countries in Africa never to be under any European power. This is the story of Empress Tayatu, Africa's greatest empress. Tayadu Bedu was born in 1851 in the northern city of Debre Taba in Ethiopia. She was the third of four children born from an aristocratic family that was related to the Solomonic dynasty of Ethiopia. Her uncle, Dejamachi Wube Haile Mariam, was the ruler of Tigray and much of the northern Ethiopia in the 1840s. There's no record indicating that Tayadu attended school. However, she was taught to read and write in Ahmeric. This was rare considering that during this particular period of time, many parents prioritized boys' education. Other literature have also suggested that she was taught diplomacy, politics, and economics. Tayadu also understood Giz, a language once exclusive to the Ethiopian Orthodox religion. Tayadu was married to her first husband, an office of Emperor Theodros at age 10. This was not uncommon during this period of time. By the time Tayatu met Menerik at age 34, she had been divorced three times. Tayatu married Menerik, who then was not the emperor. It is believed that Menerik married Tayatu to consolidate power in the northern part of Ethiopia. It is believed that Tayadu had a lineage traced to Solomonic dynasty, a line which traced its origin back to the pairing of King Solomon and Queen of Sheba. After the couple married, Tayadu persuaded Menerik to build a house near the hot springs at the foot of the table land and to grant the land in the near area to the members of nobility. The city was founded in 1887 and was named Addis Ababa, which translates to New Flower by Tayatu. In 1889, Menerik II and Tayatu were crowned Emperor and Empress of the Kingdom of Ethiopia. From the beginning, Empress Tayatu wielded considerable political power and she led a conservative faction at the loyal court that resisted the modernists and progressives who wanted to develop Ethiopia along the western lines and bring modernity to the country. While other men could feel intimidated by such a strong woman, Menerik II embraced Empress Tayatu. The two settled into a well-polished, good cup, bad cup routine. Menerik II would regularly struggle and avoid taking unpopular stance when meeting the people by saying Ishi Nega, which translates into yes tomorrow. While Tayad would tell the people decisively, say Imbi, which translates into absolutely not. Empress Tayad would become a survey advisor to Emperor Menelik II every political move. Interrupting negotiations often in a decisive and hostile way. Empress Tayad was a key player in the conflict over Treaty of Vochale with Italy, but let's not go ahead of ourselves. In the 1800s, Africa was torn apart by European powers in what would be later known as the Scramble for Africa. Italy, not wanting to be left behind, started annexing land in Africa, starting with Libya, Somalia, and Eritrea. After annexing Eritrea, the Italians set their eyes on Eritrea's neighbor, Ethiopia. On 2nd May 1889, the two parties met in the town of Wuchale to iron out an agreement for a treaty. The treaty was meant to establish diplomatic relations between the two kingdoms. The treaty was written in two languages. The Italian document was written in Latin, while the Ethiopian document was written in Ahmeric. 
During the process, Empress Diad was heavily involved. After the two parties signed the agreement, the Ethiopians got wind of the story that the Italians were claiming that Ethiopia was her protectorate. The Ethiopians were shocked and realized that they were tricked during the signing of the Treaty of Vochari. The bone of contention was Article 17, which stated that His Majesty, the King of Kings of Ethiopia, can use the government of His Majesty, the King of Italy, for all treatments that did business with other powers or governments. According to this vision, the Emperor of Ethiopia is granted a choice and is not mandated to use the Italian government to conduct foreign relations. The Italian version stated that Ethiopia was obliged to conduct all foreign affairs through the Italian authorities, in effect making Ethiopia an Italian protectorate. While the Amharic version gave Ethiopia considerable autonomy with the option of communicating with third powers through the Italians. In October 1889, the Italians informed all other European powers that Ethiopia was now an Italian protectorate because of the Treaty of Uchale. Therefore, other European powers could not conduct diplomatic relations with Ethiopia, with the exception of the Ottoman Empire. The moment that the discrepancy was uncovered, Empress Diad was the first to shake up the hesitant emperor and other men to stand up for liberty, dignity against the Italian aggression. The Empress was quoted saying, I am a woman, I do not like war, however I would rather die than accept your deal. Don't ever think that we are not willing to sacrifice our comfort and die for our country. Giving one's life for the country is an honorable death. With the influence and insight of Empress Tayatu, Emperor Menelik II rejected the protection from Italy. Unable to resolve this disagreement, the treaty was denounced by Menelik II. This action left the Italians with no option. The Italian government decided on a military solution to force the Ethiopians to abide by the Italian version of the treaty. Defying expectation as a woman, Empress Tayadu refused to stay behind. Instead, she led her own army of 5,000 men into battle. Empress Tayadu's moment to shine arrived in 1896 during the siege of Mekere. The Italian troops were hauled up into an impenetrable fortress, agonizing the Ethiopian army. Tayatu's chess skills came into play, with the aim of smoking the Italian troops out of its hall, she sent out an errand, a section of her army, an errand to cut the water supply of the fort from its source. After 10 days of dehydration and suffering, the Italian army emerged and surrendered. After the battle of Mekere, Empress Tayatu used her network of spies to finish off the Italian invasion. Empress Tayatu was the one analyzing the intelligence information collected by spies, which historians have characterized as of crucial importance to the Ethiopian victory of Battle of Adoa. The information enabled Menelik to attack the Italians at the side of his choosing, at Adoa, instead of Adigrat, near the Eritrean border, where the Italians expected to have a relatively logistic advantage. The Italians were hoping that Menelik would meet them in Adigra, close to where they had a well-protected military base. During the battle, Empress Tayadu and 600 female entourage would nurse the wounded soldiers. At one point, the morale in the camp was low. She went to the midst of the soldiers, shouting, Victory is ours! Keep on fighting, men! After the two armies met at Adoa, the Italians were heavily defeated. The Italians suffered about 6,000 killed 
and 1,500 wounded in the battle, and subsequently retreated back into Eritrea, with 3,000 taken prisoners. This was the first time a European power had been defeated by an African country. This humiliating defeat led to the public demonstrations in Italy, which led to the resignation of Prime Minister Crisipi. The army was ordered to return to Italy, and the Italians and Ethiopians signed a new treaty, the Treaty of Addis Ababa, where the Italians recognized Ethiopia as an independent country. During the negotiations, Italians specifically asked to speak to Empress Tayatu. This was a sure sign of her power and influence in Ethiopia. The defeat of Italians had a great impact on the African continent. It became a rallying point for later African nationalists during the struggle for decolonialization or post-colonial independence, as well as activists and leaders of the Pan-African movement. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a video specifically of the Battle of Adoa. In 1906, things started turning worse for Empress Tayato. First, her husband's health started to decline. Emperor Menelik II had a stroke. This meant that he could not discharge his duty as an emperor. This left Empress Tayato the real power behind the throne, in a time that women were not regarded highly due to cultural beliefs. This created a power struggle between Empress Tayatu and some elites of the kingdom. In one last dish move to hang on to power, Empress Tayatu decided to appoint members of her tribe to positions of power and influence. But this decision soon backfired. With her opponents going on a smear campaign accusing her of nepotism and xenophobia. The fact that Empress Tayatu had no kids with Menelik II left her with little leverage in the power struggle. Her opponents conspired against her and influenced Emperor Menelik II to name Iyasu as his heir. In 1910, she was forced from power and allegiance under Las Tasemu Nedeu took over. Empress Tayatu was instructed to limit herself in the care of her sickening husband. Tayatu faded from political scene. In 1913, Menelik II died and was succeeded by his grandson, Iyasu. In 1917, Empress Tayatu died. Tayatu Bet was an authentic Ethiopian leader. Her deeds at a critical moment in Ethiopian history not only saved Ethiopia from European colonialization, but it also paved way for the decolonialization of Africa. Her advice and action resulted in the defeat of the Italian army at the Battle of Adoa. A mighty European power defeated at the hands of Africans. Tayatu strongly defended national interest by overcoming challenges both from within and from outside. Just as there was no Menelik II without Tayatu Bet, there would have been no Ethiopia without Tayatu's great strength, courage, devotion, and determination. Tayatu Bet was truly Ethiopian sunshine and should forever be remembered as one of the greatest empress of Ethiopia and of Africa as a whole. In the words of Count Piero Antolini, the Italian signatory of the Treaty of Vuchari, he is quoted to have said, Empress Tayatu was a woman who perhaps in another millennia would have been a Christina of Sweden or Catherine the Great. Thank you all guys for watching our videos and subscribing to our channel. I thank you so much for all the support. Uh, I'm committed to producing high quality content that will tell the story of Africa.
but I would like to ask you to help me, not monetarily, but to comment on these videos. Please tell me what you want me to improve in terms of story narration, everything you think it will help to improve the content of this channel.